Welcome to another edition of Plank of the Week. This is Talk Radio TV. Welcome to Plank of the Week. And due to the incredible demand for me to get these two people back together in the same room, I have for your delectation this week, Mr Christo, Talk Radio's fantastic weekend presenter and every other show that you've always done, and Dawn Leeson, um, who has managed to find some time in a very busy schedule to come and help us out uh, here with Plank of the Week. Dawn, would you like to kick us Thank off? Thank you with very the first much, plank Mr. Graham. I nice will do. Thank you very much. Yes. Well, I'm going to go straight in with the ultimate winner, so Christo may as well just not say anything. Yes. Go, Boris Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> just give me it now. I mean, that's it. It's hard really to <clears throat> avoid this it, man, It is. It? I mean, I pretty much nominate him every time I'm on. So, mm. um, but here we go. The latest one, in case anyone's missed it, is that on the 19th of June, 2020, there was a birthday party mm. held in Downing is Street for Boris Johnson. I don't know. He doesn't know. We, we have got, like, this is where we know. are in this country Sue now. Gray we, didn't tell him if it was his birthday. <laughs> we have, we have got, this was, this was obviously a, a, another business meeting where 30 people turned up. Just a random interior designer happened to wander past well, with yeah. a birthday cake. In the stateroom of the Downing state Street. Room, in, uh, and they all sung happy birthday. Mm, right. And this was at a time when you couldn't sing in public. You couldn't public, sing. Well, this is in the a public. closed space. Yeah. yeah, you couldn't sing in public. You couldn't actually go to church and sing. Right. But Presumably you couldn't blow out candles either because that would be no dangerous, wouldn't it? No blowing was allowed. No. Blowing? No, was there no, no blowing? blowing? It would be very difficult for our Prime Minister, I imagine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. Steady, yeah. Steady days. <laughs> So, and this is, now, we, we, this is where we are in this country. We have, on one hand, we have a prime minister who doesn't know what a birthday party is, OK? Or any other kind of party. Or, or any other kind of party. But the opposition, or the no opposition, we have a leader, leader in inverted commas, who doesn't know what a woman is. Perry, uh, heaven help us all if there's a general election. Heaven help us all if there's a woman's birthday party. <laughs> oh, my God, yeah, we're well, really in trouble, aren't has we? Have you ever spoken but, to Angela Rayner, do you think? <laughs> She's got lovely hair. I she do has like got Angela nice Rayner's hair. hair. Yeah. I do love. But I mean, never has so many grown-ups been obsessed by a birthday party, have we? I mean, it's all we're talking about. And, and let's face it, there's slightly other not important well, things. Well, the thing going is, lots of people are saying to me, "Well, why are we obsessing about it? If you're in the office." People buy cake. If it's your birthday, they but, bring it to you. You have a little sing-song. You have a bit of cake. You go back to work. That's what they're saying. But it wasn't like that, was it? Well, we I don't know. It wasn't like that. We do know. Well, I the mean, Dean <laughs> Doris defended him <clears throat> in that, saying, well, look, you know, it's just a small gathering. That had been a birthday cake. That was it. But 30 people moved into the Downing Street state room. And Carrie like, Johnson let them eat cake. Yeah, absolutely. She organised it. She invited Carrie them Carrie Antoinette. In. Yes, and then Lulu Littleton, whatever the entire designer's name was, was there as well. I mean, yeah. which, which part Well, she of the... was apparently putting the big expensive wallpaper up. The 820 quid yeah. roll. She had to take a break because obviously the union that she works for said you can't keep putting that wallpaper up, darling, without having a break. Th this was just... <laughs> <laughs> this just was breaking all the But, I mean, is rules. anybody at any point going to say, can we just stop this now? Can it's we just stop insane. this absolute and utter cavalcade of nonsense? Can people just start telling the truth and not saying that they're going to hide behind an investigation? Because, of course, now there's another investigation. Yes, exactly. Which has stymied the first investigation. Yeah. Hasn't there? Yeah, absolutely, because the police are now involved. The police who were standing on the doors of Downing right. Street and obviously noticed all this going on but, at some point. Uh, who also, did they not say the police that we're not going to investigate because there isn't any evidence? Yeah, and we're not going to do things retrospectively. That was a while ago. No. Sue Gray looked into it and then she came up with evidence <laughs> that the police had. Look, I'm just relieved to see that Lame Dick is doing something. Sorry, Dame Dick <laughs> is actually going to be doing something at last. Dame Dick. Dame Dick, yeah. <laughs> It's just, it, it is just insane. It, look, it's not the party, OK? I don't give a monkeys that anyone broke the nonsensical the lockdown row. Probably. Yeah. I mean, no one borrows anything's possible. Yeah. Um, but I don't give a monkeys that anyone broke the, 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 the nonsensical COVID rules. It's the hypocrisy yes. of stopping people. You know, the old cliches of seeing loved ones, you know, who are dying in care homes, women giving birth alone in hospitals. Mm. You know, people were sticking to They the really rules. were. And Which it's were the, ridiculous. It, I mean, the, of that's, they were. that's no defence. I'm sorry. All these government ministers now coming out saying, "Well, look, you know, this was just a birthday party. Yeah. It, these rules were ridiculous. <coughs> they voted for but the rules. Those were their rules." rules. Well, also, Mrs. Boris Johnson a plate, rules. not because <coughs> of the party, not because of the fact that you know he is uh, seemingly incapable of remembering what he did, but but basically because he's still there. Yeah. Right. And I know there are some people who think we shouldn't try and get him out because what comes next well, will be who, worse. Yeah, but better than ever you but, know. But you know, the fact is, he has now made it all about him. You know, yeah. we're in the midst of some kind of you know <laughs> possible diplomatic or military incident in Russia. He's going to sit in his little Downing Street office, making sure that he doesn't get removed, and that's all he's doing. <laughs> the, the thing is, right on the other hand, you've got Boris going, Putin. Right, I'm threatening you now. There'll be blood. Do not do this. And Putin's going. 
birthday. You don't even know what a birthday party is. I'm yeah. so scared of you. Right. It's like but but he needs a little war. This will be this will be good for Boris because he can kick the Sue Gray report down the road. Have he's already done that. The Met Police do all of this. He'll hope everyone will forget. Have a little war in Ukraine in the meantime. Do you think he'll go with a cake? What would go along to the Ukrainians? <laughs> just the cake. Cake. Well, he says he's going to send troops if there's an actual invasion. Exactly. And then suddenly that becomes very serious. And then it becomes like, is Boris Johnson actually capable of running this? Because all he's doing at the moment uh, is trying to deflect from his own problems. And he oh. might wander onto the battlefield and think, well, what is this? Is it a war event? But the, but the thing is, to be fair to Boris, I mean, Putin has said, look, you know, these are 106, I can't do a Russian accent, can I? These are 106,000 troops sitting on the Ukrainian border. They're not invade. They're not to invade anyone. It's just like a, a gathering. Is it? It's a work event. It's like event. a gathering. It's a work, it's a work event. event. Yes. Okay, with guns. Yeah. So, Very I mean, good. I, well, just... I mean, you can't get away from Boris Johnson. But I'm not sure he's going to win it, though, because I'm sure that Christo, in his very nice... Um, Neckerchief, handkerchief it's thing. It's a pocket square. Pocket, it's a pocket square. Is it? Neckerchief. Is it yeah. neckerchief. Near his neck? Well, I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm not, lumb I'm not a lumberjack. You could wear it around your neck. <laughs> anyway, I'm not and a dog. You, you see, that's it. why I don't compliment you because I can't do it. <laughs> I can't compliment you can only women. compliment women. Yeah, it's true. What is a woman, that's, though? Hey, that's well, that's, yeah, exactly. Don't ask Keir Starmer. Be careful. Don't ask um, him. All Who right, you got, I though? think I will start with <laughs> Transport Secretary Grant Shack. Yes. Now, okay. Not, now, I could have done it alone for that absolutely cringeworthy video that he put out of him sat on a train talking about how they were reducing the number of train announcements. I don't know if you saw that. Yes. It was yeah. absolutely They're diabolical. They're also reducing the number of trains because they haven't got any drivers. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Home. So all, yeah. By yeah. default, there'll be fewer announcements. Yeah, exactly right. No, I'm going to do it because of this ridiculous change to the highway code oh. rules, oh. which is essentially saying, look, if you're a pedestrian or a cyclist, if you are crossing the path of a car, if you want to cross the road if you're a pedestrian, or if you're cycling along and you see a car indicating to cross your path, actually, you have right of way, mm. which is brilliant because what it's going to lead to, and I'm so touched by this, is a number of pedestrians and cyclists who are going to be able to put on their gravestones they had right of way. Yes. Because, of course, they'll be dead, mm. but virtuous. Isn't this also the work of somebody who's never actually left London? Because it's all very well to say you can walk across Whitehall uh, because the cars are travelling quite slowly. But try doing it on the A21, yeah. you know, as you're heading down towards, um, you know, Hastings well, you can from always join Tunbridge it. Wells, where tra people are going at 60 miles an hour and, you... and more. But, Mike, you could always join Extinction Rebellion, then you've got no problem. Yeah. You can just walk out the road. But they've got right there. of way. This is the point. They can wander into Does the road. Does this mean they've it's like right can go and sit on the, on the pavement as well? Maybe. But the thing is, we've got so many phone zombies nowadays crossing yeah. roads, not looking at yeah. all. We used to teach stop, look, and listen. You would stop. Do you remember the, yeah. the Green Cross code? I do. The green do you remember cross the, code the man, man, you know, in the green yeah. light cross? Yeah, I, I thought you'd remember the green. I the man, do remember. He was very tall. He was about not, six foot seven. Was, was he no, not the same guy like that him. played Darth Vader? Yeah, he was. Yeah. Peter someone, I yeah. think his name Dave is. Dave Prowse, was it Prowse? Dave, yes, Prowse, that's David right. Prowse, that's it. That's it. And he played Darth Vader, who's a very, very tall, stocky man. Stocky, uh, very uh, stocky. You know, in muscular. Yeah. In Lycra. And do you know what? I've never forgotten the road rules since. No. Because of that. No. You used to stop, look at the curb, look both right. ways, and then cross. Nowadays, you just, pedestrians and cyclists just hurl themselves right. into the roads, hurl but also themselves now it's under much HGV, more confusing, right? and it's the driver's fault. No, but now it's much more confusing because when you look one way and then you look the other way and you look for cars, what you don't know is that they've actually got a bike lane which is going in completely opposite direction. Yeah. Uh, and you don't see them coming. There's because no they don't make any noise. But, 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 but that, that's not important because no cyclists are using the cycle in now because the new rules also mean that we, because we, I'm a cyclist, can ride two abreast in the middle of the road. Yes. Yeah. Holding you, don't you all need up. To. Apparently, you're allowed to do that anyway, but these rules just clarify that, which okay. is rubbish. Also, as well, under Grant Chaps' mm. jurisdiction, we now have this new Active Travel England Commission. Oh, yes. What? Two billion pounds, which will be spent to get more people walking and cycling. That, why, that is why? putting one foot in front of why the other. Why do they want more people walking and cycling? Why? Because it's all part of the greed agenda. Isn't yes, it? but it's been run by Chris Boardman, Clean who, of air. course, is the managing director of a cycling company. Oh, yeah. So that's not going to do him any harm. Yeah. And he's going to tell us to reduce our carbon footprint whilst fathering six children himself. Now, the, you would have thought the Lycra and the saddle would have perhaps affected his reproductive skills. I dread to think how many children he'd have 
If you haven't been cycling. But, I mean, again, this is ludicrous, isn't it? Because having children is not necessarily going to make your carbon footprint any worse than doing all sorts of other things, you know. No, but my carbon day, footprint will never be anywhere near someone who's got six children. Well, you don't know that. Well, you don't know that. Because they've got individual carbon footprints, haven't they? You don't blame one person for having a carbon footprint. I mean, I don't count, you know, whoever you live with as part of your carbon no, footprint. No, but if I were to reproduce six children then tell you, a single person, if you were, mm. that your carbon footprint is horrific, that would make me a hypocrite. Well, I don't think it would, actually. It but would. I'm not going to sit here and defend Chris Baldwin because I think he's a ludicrous appointment. I think the whole idea is mad. And in most parts of Britain, you can't walk anywhere. There's loads of parts of the countryside you yeah, where absolutely. there isn't even a pavement. So you're taking your life in your hands, walking down the road the opposite way, so that when the car comes, it can see you just before it runs you That's over. Why, why do we need two billion pounds to tell us how to well, walk? My motor I skills I had already. Yeah, this also, is what as I, don't I said, understand. as it's... I said, you know, I take my dog to the beach when I'm down in Sussex, right? Unfortunately, I haven't been able to teach him how to ride a bicycle, so I have to put him in the back of the car because it's about ten miles away. Yeah. You know, we're not going to be able to cycle to the beach with well, a Labrador. Apparently, you could buy one of those bikes with a doggy bar. Yeah. yeah, I would never but do. But you've got no. quite a big dog, haven't you? He's a very big dog. He's a big Labrador. You know, he's not likely to go inside any box. No, but no how... My Dominique Devereaux and Dolly Parton will not go in one of those, I tell you that for nothing. Mm. Okay. Yeah. You've Why? got little dogs, haven't you, though? No, they're not that little. I mean... Uh, little. Uh, Dee Dee's sort of medium No, but size. again, the point is, surely the point is, is, what the hell are they doing? Why are they always telling us what to do? Two billion pounds. Why are they always pounds. telling us how we but should what, get from what point is A to it, point what, B? How is it going to cost two billion pounds? What are they spending two billion pounds on? That's what I don't well, understand. Well, a hundred members of staff... And part what? of it is also they're going to teach councils how to suppress the objections to low traffic neighbourhoods mm. and cycle lanes in the area. So it's basically centralised propaganda. Yeah. We now live in a communist and a state of, of centralised propaganda. And there'll be a load of advertising, some of which I think I've already heard. It's like, take a bike. Well, no, thanks. I'll yeah. take a bike so, if I want to. So why would you do it? Because you heard, oh, gosh, I didn't think to. I never thought that walking was an option. I mean, why do you need to hear that in an advert? So they're using taxpayers' money to tell taxpayers how to walk to the shops. Yes. yes. Marvellous. And that's fine as long as the shops are close enough for you to walk to. Yeah, yeah, but if the nearest live... shop is about 10 miles away, you're not mm. going to be walking there, are you? No. And then walking back with one bag. No. Ridiculous. With some fairy liquid in it. Ridiculous. I mean, absolutely Ridiculous. mad. Absolutely mad. Well, quite right. Do you buy a lot right. of fairy liquid, though? Eh? Do you buy a lot of fairy liquid? I buy it when it's required. Toilet roll. Why? why? I mean, that's very bold. Now, funny you should say that. But because it's not like um, do you know where they're running out of toilet roll? Where? New Zealand. Oh, really? Yes. Because so many people have been told to self isolate for 24 days by Jacinda Ardern in her latest. Is this a seamless link? It is oh, a seamless link. And I didn't even know he was going to do that. So another compliment <laughs> coming your way. She's a professional broadcaster. Um, yeah, Jacinda Ardern, who I always do an impersonation of. Don't go outside for 24 days. Uh, just in case uh, you might spread Omicron. Now, do you know how many cases? that they've discovered in order to bring this dramatic and ridiculously kind of draconian me method in. Uh, one family, apparently, who went to a wedding, all got COVID. Now, even... Omicron, this I, I mean, yeah. yeah. And I don't think that's... Well, it's still COVID. I mean, you can call it yeah, Omicron I know, if you want. I, I don't know why people it's started calling it Omicron. It's still COVID, isn't it? It is still COVID, yeah. It's absolutely. It's just a very mild yeah, version but people, Yeah, but you see, COVID. you've now fallen foul of the propaganda because they call it Omicron so that you won't think it's COVID. So when they, ca when they tell you COVID's back you'll think, oh, my God, it's not Omicron. It must be serious. Yeah, so I think the opposite, because it makes me think, well, then why are they bringing in all these ridiculous restrictions because it's, it's only Omicron? Because it's just Cinder Arden, and basically she can, because yes. she's a power-crazed... Maniac. Maniac. Yeah. She's postponed her wedding, right, which is probably great news for oh, the what? husband to be. <laughs> he was going to say, He's going, thank God for Omicron. He's going. Oh, he probably brought game. it in himself. <laughs> 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 yeah. He went abroad. That's right. <laughs> he was rubbing up against right. people in Wuhan. <laughs> <laughs> you may well have done that. What a good idea. Anyway. So, so people now have to self-isolate for 24 days. It's, a hell of, it's like an, almost an entire month, right? So apparently everyone's been stocking up on toilet paper, so they've now run out of toilet paper in New Zealand. But why 24 days? Because we know that, you know, even, you know, testing can be inaccurate, but even if you do have it, you're clear of it pretty much in five days. Yes. So yeah. why 24 days? But well, also, they've only got like half a dozen sort of cases before this was what all toilet brought in. Uh, no. <laughs> They've got no toilet roll at all. Um, 24 pack, you know, I mean, 5.5 5 million people. Over, over time has, I'm not joking, she actually did say, do not talk to your neighbours at one yeah, point. Yeah, I know yeah. she did. She also said the only proper source of information for anything to do with they're COVID doing, is the government. Yeah, they're doing right? state-sponsored journalism. She only, she only or the BBC, was, was, as we call was, it. She was, I think she offered grants and money to yeah. organise media yeah. organisations that yeah. went along with the narrative. She only invited accredited yeah. media organisations to her press conference. And when it was an unaccredited one that she went in. inside, you remember? And and and, and said, oh, um, but aren't you creating a two-tier society here? She goes, yeah, I'm really pleased to do that. And then she stormed <laughs> off. Did. 
Oh, my word. The cases, this is her quote, right? The cases are part of a single family who flew to a large wedding in Auckland in mid-January with the flight attendant also becoming infected. So we're talking like half a dozen people. So hold on a minute. So right, lock okay. down the entire country. But it's an internal flight. Yeah, Auckland, yeah? yeah. That's in New Zealand. So it's an internal flight. Well, I don't think you're allowed in from anywhere else, are you? So how did they get COVID if it's an internal flight? Well, maybe the flight attendant somehow had it. Oh, I don't yeah. know. have been somewhere else. But, the, the, but the, there aren't any flights going to and from New Zealand because people, ex-pat Kiwis who are desperate to get home, haven't seen their families for two years. I told years. you, just said his husband. Well, as you say, that's beginning He's been now. Smuggling He's been, himself. That theory, that theory is going to take some. But what credence. are they going to do about the loo roll then? If no one's allowed, do they manufacture their own loo roll? They've got a lot of sheep. You, maybe you can wipe your what, bum with wool? a sheep. <laughs> yeah. That would. I don't know you. <laughs> That's quite complicated, isn't You'd it? You'd want really? that softened up a bit first, <laughs> yeah. wouldn't you? You want a bit of, <laughs> bit of comfort on that. There are. You? I think more sheep in New Zealand than there are people. Yeah, there are. Yeah. So there you go. I mean, you've got a lot of sheep. Oh, well make use You'd of have them. to shear it first, yeah. though. You couldn't still have it attached to the sheep. <laughs> <laughs> that would be animal cruelty, <laughs> surely. I don't know how we've ended up going here because that wasn't really the plan. <laughs> <laughs> we've ended up talking about sheep when we're trying to talk about medical matters and. But it is a medical matter making sure that you're clean. Yeah, yeah. clean body. Apparently, there are several things that have been cancelled, including the great Kiwi Beer Festival. Oh. I mean, that sounds like a laugh a minute, doesn't it? Can you imagine anything worse? <laughs> eh? Well, you'd need it, wouldn't you? I mean, I know Mae West is a very old name, but Mae West once described Auckland as half the size of Queen's Cemetery and twice as dead. <laughs> <laughs> to me, to, I've, I, I must admit, I've always, I'm not going. I've always wanted to go. I wanted to go to the South Island. It's got lovely mountains. Yeah, yeah it's, like, it's, it's, it's your kind of place. It's yeah, like yeah, it's got mountains and, like and outdoors. You like hiking and, and cycling and, cycling and all those things. Why do you think I like hiking and cycling? You've been throwing a lot of insults my way today. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. I know that you once were a cyclist. I once was a cyclist. Getting me round on wheels was the easiest way, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> Right, anyway, let's have your second nomination. <laughs> oh, my God, that's flying past. I wasn't even concentrating. I was still wiping your bum with a sheep. Yeah, right. Uh, where are we? Right, OK. Well, um, your, your second nominee. I've, got, I've just spilled me, me drink all over me paper. Why did you do that? I've spurted it all over the place. Right, I'm <laughs> sorry. I didn't make that joke, no. she did. I know, I'm allowed oh. to. I'm a girl. Right, I'm going to go for uh, Christian Wakeford. Yes. Oh. Who is uh, the shameful, self-serving weasel who uh, um, crossed the floor from the Conservative Party to the Labour Party last week, despite never, ever having done anything remotely Labour-like in the past, ever. I mean, he's a true Well, it's worse than that, because all he's done is slag them off. Oh, well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a whole sort I mean, of litany of things that he's said about yeah, them. Yeah. Uh, he's also famously the guy that called Owen Patterson a four-letter word, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so he's yeah. quite vocal in the, yeah. uh, in the rude department. Famous, he probably yeah. had a point but, with that one. Well, but, he wasn't wrong. But, but hang on, why did he go not go for a party, perhaps one of the smaller parties, that would share some conservative ideology so that he didn't look like a like, hypocritical, what, like sanctimonious idiot. Well, like the Lib Dems. <laughs> yeah, but I mean... Dems, or maybe, I, I, you know, reclaim or reform or any of those. They're all being with R these days, don't yeah. they? I, can't I don't think you can do that, can you? You know that you can declare yourself to be a part from a party that isn't sitting in the House of can, Commons, can, can you? Can you not? I don't know. I don't think I you can. I think you'd have to... I mean, you could become an independent. But I'm well, not why didn't sure. he become an independent then? Well, because he didn't want to. No, yeah, because... because he wanted to get as many heads. Well, I think, actually, I think possibly the... he's a secret agent for the, the Boris administration because all it did was actually boost the, the prime minister. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Win support. Look ridiculous. Operation but Dead is, Dog. This was is a man revived. who's actually actively campaigned for a by-election to be triggered when a party MP crosses yes. from one party to the other. Mm. So as soon as he does it himself... I think his name was on the bill. It was, yeah. He's like one of the co of the bill. But as soon as he did it himself, <laughs> it was like, no, when I said let's have a by-election when yeah. someone does that, I wasn't actually talking no. about me, obviously. <laughs> Is it not the greatest indicator of all time that people in Parliament are just two-faced hypocrites, Hypocrite. I'm afraid? Yeah. I mean, bare I think that's it. Two faced. Uh, it's never been worse. It's shameless. It it shameless. Been I'm bearing in mind, he, look, I'm no fan of Boris, obviously, I've just nominated him, but I mean, he only got his seat because of Boris, Brexit, and the yeah. Tory voters. Yeah. Can you imagine living in Bury South? Sorry, Bury South. Not really. But I know. But I mean, can you imagine living there and suddenly you, you thought you've got a Conservative MP? And I know it's a bit of a fine line about what a Conservative MP is at the moment. Mm. And suddenly, You've got someone who's a Labour MP. He had a very slim majority, though, if I remember right. 429, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, I yeah. don't know, maybe there was... They don't mind that they've got a Labour MP now. Well, yeah, I, I, well, I think I if you vote Tory, would, you'd mind. He you? still yeah, won, Yeah, if you were one of the Tory he? voters. Yeah. He still won. At least half of... Yeah. Very but what's his logic as well? Because his logic, presumably, is that he's become a Labour MP because he's worried that if he stands as a Tory, he's going to lose. Yeah, basically. When, when he's basically now standing for the party that lost. Yeah. Maybe we should huh? admire the fact that he had the audacity and the foresight to do this. Maybe we should be admiring the fact that he stood 
by his principles. He hasn't got any principles. Then he he's a weasel. Okay. Then he tries to apart throw, from that. Like to call him weasel. Uh, yeah. Through. He also did he not try to throw Grant, um, not Grant Shapps, um, Williamson. Um, oh, the, Gavin Williamson. Gavin, Gavin Williamson under the bus yeah. by saying that he threatened to not give him money to start a school there. Oh, yeah, that's right. That was um, right, yeah. It's like blackmail. It's that whole blackmail, blackmail and bullying allegations yeah. that's going so on with the whips So he kind of piled office. in with all that as well. Yeah. I mean, I'm not comfortable with all these kind of people who just kiss and tell and just no, tell, you know, tell tales of things that happened ages ago. But he didn't say anything then. Why are you yeah, saying it now? now? Well, you know? yeah, I mean, because he's just self-serving. We'll, we'll forget his name, hopefully, in a couple of weeks' time. But, you know, not one of the MPs who crossed the floor under Theresa May actually won in the next election, so... Yeah, they all got kicked out. They all got yeah. kicked out. Do you so. remember somebody actually mentioned the party, I bet you can't remember the name of it, that was started up and then they had to change the name because it was the same as something else. Do you remember the party that started up... Um, with sort of six people. Was it the birthday party? It wasn't the birthday party, <laughs> oh. no, but you could start that one up. Really See, everybody's name. forgotten. <laughs> in the last parliament before Boris won oh, in 2019, yeah. um, there was a whole bunch of people, some from Labour, some from the Tories, who became a party. Oh, was it the in independent? I think it was the independent oh, something. Yeah, it was ever Subri one of them. Yeah. yeah. And then they realised actually the name was wrong because it actually belonged to something else yeah. and they couldn't use oh, it. Oh, was in there? Yes. Yeah. It was all of that so what crowd. What was the name of the party? But everyone's forgotten the name of the Do party. You know the name of the I party? remembered it a while ago, but now I've forgotten it. Oh. <laughs> so I can't remember. There's a lot of parties going yeah. on, though. It's very easy oh, to get confused. Yeah. The work event. That was the it. Work the work party. event party. <laughs> the work event party, where, yeah. Where cake was the main order of the day, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you're only yeah. allowed to meet up in uh, either very crowded rooms indoors or in gardens yeah. Um, with cheese and with wine. With cheese and wine. Yeah. Yes. And anyway. you can sing Happy Birthday, but you can't sing a hymn in your local church. Exactly right. Exactly. People will now be kicking the television going, what was the name of that party? I can't remember. No. Never mind. Talking of singing. Oh. You know someone who won't be doing that? Who? It's my next choice. This is... A Adele. Oh, Adele. It's like it's rehearsed. Yeah, there you go. Absolutely. Adele, I'm gutted. I'm gutted. I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm so gutted. sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm gutted. We're I'm not so ready. Sorry. I'm so sorry. Can you imagine if we sat here at Plank of the Week and said, look, we've been working so hard. I can't we've do been this. up all night, but we're not ready. We're just not ready. <laughs> so Half the staff have got COVID. I mean, I'd never turn down work here. Never. As no, you know, I know. No, we I never turn down We're trying work. to get rid of for ages. No. Uh, so she so has get, sent this very, very tearful Instagram yeah. apology. Yes. And she says it's because the show isn't ready. Yes. Now, I don't mean to be funny. And I don't mean Good, to criticise her down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to be funny. I can be. But... Uh, no one goes to an Adele concert because they want to see that the staging's done properly or that the light show is amazing yeah. or that the set is brilliant, which is apparently why she actually did this. They go to an Adele show because she's got an amazing voice. So if the set wasn't ready, if the show wasn't ready, firstly, you could have told people more than 24 hours before when yes. they were actually in the Las Vegas they were hotel room. They had actually <laughs> flown to Las Vegas for yeah. the world. to go there. <laughs> totally. Yeah. And you could have told them before, or what you could have done is said, really sorry, we're not ready, but I'm going to do an acoustic unplugged yeah. show instead. Adele Myself, unplugged. with a guitar and a piano, because you only want my voice, I'll do a Q&A at yeah. the end, maybe well, give you a voucher for you know the casino. What? They could have even actually just had her singing over a backing track. I mean, you yeah. know, it's, it's, not, it's been known to have been done before. It's got an entire career out you know, of it. Don't know <clears throat> what the Spice Girls did. I used to want the Spice Girls to mime. To, I hated no, I'm not it saying miming. Live. No, I'm not saying miming. I'm oh, saying so you play the music, live. but you actually sing live yeah, over the music. Track, like they used to do on top of the pops when they used to pretend but, to play Well, the they used to pretend, yeah, but they weren't doing anything, right? Yeah. yeah. But this po the point about all of this is that apparently she was um, in, playing in a place called the Caesars Palace Coliseum, yes. uh, which has hosted Mariah Carey, yeah. Celine Dion, yeah. and Madonna, right? Mm. Three women who are not exactly undemanding, you might say. Uh, but apparently she's even more demanding than them. She wants to change all of the sound system. She wants to change all of the video system. Apparently there's a swimming pool involved yeah. where she was going to sing in the middle of a swimming pool mm. and that wasn't working out too well. Meanwhile, uh, she's got this very well-named boyfriend called Rich Paul. Oh. I mean, she used to go out with a bloke, the, called, the out with bloke <laughs> called Poor Paul, but, you know, he couldn't <laughs> afford her. But, you know, the point is, is that, you know, she clearly has become such a massive diva since she's moved to America. No, I'll tell you what it you is. Know, she's lost the weight. That's what happens when you lose the weight, you become a diva. Why? I don't know. I think she's now. Well, I, just, I could have confidence. been more cruel there. I could have said, How do you do that? <laughs> I knew this would be stressful. Fat shaming. So I knew that you'd be fat shaming Listen, me. Listen, I can I fat it. shame because I'm fat. So, you know, you can't accuse well, me. Well, I don't like the word fat. That's discriminatory. Well, I don't care. I knew this would be stressful. Yeah. <laughs> I knew it would be. <laughs> but, but the, the I see you're not wearing your loafers today as well. <laughs> Here he comes. Is this what you take on a Saturday morning? 
Liquid yeah. hydrogen. I've prepared I've mean, for it. I've just got water but, here. But the thing is with Adele, right, and yeah. she cancelled the concert, like, 24 yeah. hours to go, right, but don't you think she'd have realised before well, 24 you thought, hours? She would have done. But she would have thought maybe she hasn't done. Maybe a week before. Well, she hasn't done a very clever girl, though. Oh, that's gone right to my chest. I tell you, not in a good way. Um, she's not decided to withdraw the merchandise. No. From, no, you so can now, still go to the shop, can't you? You could still buy a £55 bottle of Adele wine, mm. which is all she ever does, right. is wine. Yeah. Um, yeah. £33 <laughs> T-shirt, yeah. £11 socks, and £8.50 What does the T-shirt say? I'm gutted. Yeah. Gutted, <laughs> I'm sorry. <isn't> <laughs> I'm sorry. Did you, did you see her quote? She goes, I sweated blood getting this shot together. And it's like, well, yeah. wouldn't you have sweated a bit more blood getting it's your a actual show together? Oh, so, cry your heart out tissues. Oh, I'll tell you what the T-shirt says. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm really, really right. hungry. <laughs> well, you know what? I mean, she has sort of somehow uh, managed to keep all of her fans on side, though, because I don't know if you've seen... I know. All of I them are so... Know. Because yeah. they're so obsessed with her. And she spoke to a few of them over FaceTime, and then she put out this tweet saying, my fans are the best. But the problem is, right, she, hasn't, she can't even give them a date as to when the, the show is going to go on. It because happen, it might be, it like, in a year's time. Well, apparently one hotel worker said that guards had been stationed outside because of the, there were fears irate customers mm. might cause trouble. Right. James Fox, 25, from Nashville, Tennessee, spent £2,000 on flight tickets and hotel rooms Jeez. and posted a critical message on social media. Yeah. It was the only one they could find. Well, the thing is, if you'd flown from here, taken time off work, spent 10 grand on a sort of week in Las Vegas, you wouldn't be too happy, would you? No. No. Adele replied to him saying, go and visit the store to enjoy some items on display, including her Oscar outrageous. for the Feet song. To James sorry. Go and look at the Oscar I wanted yeah. to I'm sorry. I mean, I sorry. That's it really is, it is. And also, I mean, it's very unprofessional, isn't it? Yeah. You know, we all have... We know, we know about being professional. Listen, I well, hate we, unprofessional. Yeah, me well, too. We all, we all, I'm not sure you should be doing that, like, consistently on planks, by Why? the way, because we don't encourage... You know, reckless behaviour. That's not reckless. Having a little. By the I way, if anyone put it know, away. it's my little hip flask. Yeah, I think you should put it away. I don't know if it'll fit because in my there are children now. watching this. I don't want to be getting a bad, it's a very uh, small hip flask. Bad example. It is a small. Well, sizes and everything, babes. No, that's what they say. <laughs> that's what and I, you know, I just think that uh, that it's not ridiculous. You, if you can't, if you can't put a show together for five hundred thousand pounds a mm. night, which is what she was going to be paid. Then I really think it's time to give if up. If they were the going to pay me five hundred thousand pound a night, I tell you now, I would turn up if I was half dead, naked. If I was ill, if I was anything, I would be there. Yes, you would think so. Nothing would and stop. And that would all be this more than enough to cancel the concert. <laughs> and also all this rubbish. They would have security to stop people getting in. Yeah, all this rubbish about no, they'd be keeping them in and stopping them from trying to get out. <laughs> I mean, you know, um, but you know. <laughs> What's he doing here? Um, <laughs> you know what? what? I, but I think, wait for it, wait there. I think the sky's fallen in for oh. Adele. Oh, oh, oh. take good. the girl out of the tablet. Yeah, okay. yeah. But here's the thing. She should not have been able to say, look, all, all my staff have got COVID. Because she's working in a theatre in Las Vegas where that's all they do. You know, they've got people that work in casinos. They've got understudies, yeah. I mean, not they have every that, single... No, I'm talking about just the, the guys that are going to press the buttons, that's what I mean. the lighting guys. No, 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 you know, I mean, it's the same thing no that happens when you try and ring a department store now and they give you a message saying everyone's got COVID. Yeah, yeah they're all working yeah. from home. Through. Adele's doing the same thing. But a big Vegas production like that, even the stagehands will have understudies. They've always yeah. got at least two people to do that well, they job. They must have. Unbelievable. Well, she might be back in the summer to play Hyde Park. So there we go. There's well, don't, bo I don't bother buying any tickets, I'd no. say. Wait for the. Um... And some people were paid, I couldn't believe this when I read it, 30,000 quid on the black market. Blimey. To go and see so the own. normal price ticket's 500. Yeah. So we were a girl singing really, really miserable songs. Yeah, that sound the same. Oh my god. I know. Should well, we she turn this, use this for the next album. She will, and then she get an entire box out of this one. Yeah. So there you go. That's Adele. I think that's one. a very good nomination. Yeah. I think that mine might win it. Thank I'm going to go slightly less well known on the basis that uh, everybody knows who Adele is. You may or may not have had a Weber barbecue in your time. Have you? Have you oh, ever had a I Weber? Think I bought my dad a Weber. The, the, no. the, the, generally, the three-legged standing ones with the big, you know, sort of oh, the I black think I bought him a rectangle one with four legs. Okay, they're yeah. very. I mean, they're I very they famous. Like little brand. aliens, like yeah, little spaceships. That's them. Oh yeah, yeah no, 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 no. Very famous brand. I believe American. Um, but what they do, of course, uh, for all of their customers who are subscribers to Weber, because people like to buy, you know, the, the barbecue mm. forks and all the various bits and pieces. Where's but summer going? is on the horizon. Summer is on the horizon. And also, in some parts of America, it's never not summer. Yeah. You know, in the mm. southern states, in Florida, you mm. can have a barbecue right now if you want. Oh, and it's very nice. Now, apparently what they do is they send out a sort of weekly email to subscribers, and it always includes a recipe, right? And the recipe they sent out... Uh, this particular week, which is last week, um, was for 
barbecued meatloaf. Oh, you know, lovely. which Ooh. on the face of it huh. is quite a nice thing to watch. I know where this is going. Um, they sent it out on the Friday of last week. Unfortunately, on the Thursday, uh, Marvin Lee Ade, aka Meatloaf, oh, had ouch. died. And so, yes, you people could thought see that why that would be a problem. Timing. The timing wasn't timing great. Not so they good. actually did this the day after the death of Meatloaf. Yes, and they were forced to issue an apology <laughs> to all of their subscribers, <laughs> uh, which went something like this. In today's email, we hi <laughs> so, we, we highlight we highlighted a grilled meatloaf recipe. At the time we shared this recipe with you, we were not aware of the unfortunate passing of an American singer and actor, Mr. Martin Lee Ade also known as Meatloaf. Um, we, we want to express our deepest apologies for this oversight and for any offence this email may have caused. We send our condolences to Mr Ade's family and fans. Thank you for understanding. The thing is, he, he actually was known by deed poll as Meat Meatloaf. Loaf. Yeah. Meat was his first name, yeah. Loaf was his second. Yeah. Right. So they should have, by rights, used his real name. Yeah. But you, rather than using Marvin Ade or whatever it was, mm -hmm. they should have actually said, mm -hmm. we're sorry that we sent... Well, it's kind of confusing, actually, loaf. because in this article I'm reading from, was they spell meatloaf two different ways, as one word and two. No, it's, I saw an interview with them once. It's meat. meat. Okay. Is it? Credits yeah. of the Rocky Horror Picture Show, it's Yes. Wrong. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, very sad that he did. I played Bat Out of Hell all weekend. You know that's one of the top ten selling mm. albums of all time. Yeah, 100 Still. million. Yep. 100 million mm. copies. Yeah, 100 million, I yep. would grill anything for love. Yes, very good. That. <laughs> that is very good for you. Thanks. Very good indeed. Yeah, but he likes the sausage, not, doesn't he? He's got all the sausage jokes. It just goes to show you, though, that all of this kind of, you know, what I would call outsourcing of your product. Yeah. You just try and overreach. Some you try and do things. Work X on social media right. would have done that. Going, I don't know what. I mean, it's. I mean, is. it's pretty difficult not to have discovered that Meatloaf had died, though. Surely the day after. It was pretty. Yeah, but, huge. You wouldn't, but if you were some young social media person, you wouldn't think to look up that someone was called Meatloaf. Here's your chance to put your third nominee out Okay, there. I'm transfixed by the idea of pork now. Right. Okay, fine. Right. My, what am I it. doing? Yeah, Shut up, doing? Dawn. Shut up, woman. You've got all these resources here. Yeah, you I don't know. know it's, it's like old school writing stuff I down. Mean, why is the point of having like these post-it notes if you don't know what page you're on? <laughs> Any What's wrong with her? <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. I was sidetracked. <laughs> I was sidetracked by thinking about your pork sausage. There you go. Any I, case. I think about any, rarely think about anything else, frankly. Yeah, we yeah. know. Yes. <laughs> right, civil servants. You're sending me these messages. I do. Civil servants. Civil no, servants. No, that one was from me, that one. Oh, was yeah, it? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Uh, civil servants. Yes. They are my nomination. Now, this is their second nomination this year. Oh, is I'm it? Only in January. Blimey, so they we're not out of January the, yet. Okay. They could be going to well, the top this of the chart. You know, in the week that we are all told to get back to work, yes. end of working from home, yes. fantastic. I totally agree with that. The civil service, in their infinite wisdom, have decided that it's not quite right for them. So most of the departments have said, okay, we will be getting people back to work, but like two, three days a week, possibly. And then we could do a week in and then a week out because we haven't got enough room for the desk. <laughs> oh, the desks. The desks is their excuse. I mean, unbelievable. So, I know, I know. But this is, as Boris urges us to get back to the office, if you look online at the moment, there are 59 civil service jobs advertised with salaries of up to £48,000, all of them promising that the successful applicant will be able to work from the comfort of their own Apparently home. Apparently loads of them have bought houses in places like Wiltshire and you sold their never property. Have to go back to Cornwall, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they'll never have to yeah. come back. Yeah. yeah. And they'll probably get away with it. Lovely, comfortable, middle-class existences. Why do they need to go and actually do a job? Yeah, but, you know, one of the worst offenders, and this will annoy everybody pretty much, is the uh, DVLA. The DVLA, yeah. who have been absolutely well, listen, hopeless. One of the reasons that HGV drivers were in yeah. short supply was because yeah. they couldn't get their licences no, renewed. because all the all the civil servants down there were working yeah. from home and then couldn't, couldn't so process it. basically what it. you do is you just go and check your emails twice right. a day. That's what I, was, do, I mean, right? by coincidence, I was in the passport office the other week, right? I'm not letting you out of the country, are they? Uh, no, oh. um, but it was from one of my kids who had to get you know, a renewable passport. And um, there was literally, I think I could have counted on one hand the number of people in there. You know, two of them were on security to get in. And then there was one guy that you went to see, and then you had to go in a lift, and you go upstairs. You know where they have all those interviews? Yeah, 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 yeah. There was about two people working. Uh, well, why? I mean... Why do they just... Lazy, is that it? Is that what we're saying? Well, I think, like a lot of people, if you said to them, you, look, you don't worry about coming into the office anymore, you'd go, great, I'm never going to do it. I mean, I would hate it, personally. I love I, being in the office. I yeah. love working with people. Yeah, I, I, I can't work when I'm home. I have to be there. You have to yeah. go somewhere, yeah, don't yeah. you? I can't. I can't. No, no. So, they, you just, I don't understand the people who feel motivated to work at home. Mm. 
Oh, well, clearly they don't. Otherwise, we would have HGV drivers. But genuinely, it's very bad for mental health because you either become incredibly lazy and you slump on your settings, you watch your daytime TV, for, oh, or you become obsessed and mm, you're never off your laptop. Mm. But also, it's very bad for our communities in general because yeah. you know parts of London, Manchester, probably Edinburgh, where all the tax people are. Um, you know, they're not going out to any of the local shops. They're not, and they all say, oh, but, you know, we're, we're, we're actually spending money in our local economy. No, you're not. No. No. If you're working from no. home, you are not going out to get a sandwich. So, no. City centres are... You're not having a coffee, you're having a coffee at no. home in the morning. City centres are dying, absolutely. Yeah, you know, you're not yeah. going... You might go out and get your hair cut, but yeah. I suppose you need to if you never leave the house. Also, should we not say that civil servants should be nominated as well because it seems to be mostly civil servants who are having all these parties? Yeah. Yes. Well, they I are, mean, it was civil they? servants yeah. who went down yeah. to the office. Yeah. I mean, well, yeah, I mean, it is. It's, oh, there's a part. There's a business it's, it's, meeting. It's a, it's a business meeting after work today. Oh, great. We're I'll coming in there, today yeah. then. Yeah. Get the suitcase. But it's true. You can bring the suitcase in, fill it up with wine. I mean, yeah. unbelievable. Just unbelievable. I know. And it's talking of suitcase full of wine. Where, 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 where's our? It's outside. Business? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's not been allowed in. I, I, I bring mine with me. He's yeah, got his uh, hip flask. In a small hip flask. What have you got in there, actually? Just brandy. Brandy. Just brandy. brandy. Is it Metaxa brandy? Yes, it is. 12 star Metaxa. You see, oh, you can I take thought... the boy out of Greece. Yeah. I know. But you can That's never take never read the Greek out of the boy. The boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if only. No, I know. Now, listen, let's oh, have your third nominee. Oh, now, talking about. Well, I won't say talking about what we're talking about. Oh, actually, do you know what we should do? Before we get to your third, we should discuss the carried over. Oh, oh, uh, oh, I wonder who that is. I'm afraid it's going to be Harry and Meghan again. No. Yes, I'm afraid yeah, so. Are they, just, are they going to just have a permanent they slot? Just give well, they haven't been quite as high up the list as they were last year. So yeah. anyway, but this time they've got they've got this deal with Spotify. Oh, yes. You know, for yeah. millions and millions and millions and hundreds of millions of for, dollars. For doing And Spotify, podcasts. not surprisingly, have asked, why have you only managed to do one podcast <laughs> in an entire year? So we're going to take it over and put a producer on it, yeah. um, you know, and see if you can actually maybe turn out a couple. <laughs> Would like something Possibly. for maybe what was three. It, they spent yeah. 18, 19 million, million pounds yeah. or something yeah. on it. Yeah. 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 Would like something. So, I mean, so they'd like some bang for their buck, I yeah. think is what they're saying. Yeah. Wow. So I think Harry and Meghan, we for that alone, mm. uh, will we'll be carried over. So your third, sorry to interrupt. Uh, my third, right. Well, it's actually going to be the, uh, uh, this is about the gay couple. Right now, the gay couple themselves. The gay cake. When you say the gay couple, people might no, not know which not gay, the gay couple. Cake. Okay, yeah. well, it was the gay couple that were refused the right to go and do a house viewing with a house that was on the market in Kent. It was on for six hundred and fifty thousand pounds, and they were turned down from mm. doing the viewing by the house owners no. by the name of Dr. Joanna Brunker uh -huh. and her husband, the builder Luke Main. Right now, they are my planks, not the gay couple. No. The couple who refused the viewing because of their religious beliefs. They sent a message but back. But how did they know the couple in question were gay? Well, they were doing it through one of these agencies that you sell it yourself. Oh, yeah. And so the couple who wanted to see the house, um, Luke Whitehouse and Lachlan Mantle, the gays, right. they messaged them, said, we'd love to come and see your house. Love from Luke and... And, and right. they wanted to put love, but Luke and Lacken. Yeah. Yeah. The couple, Dr. Joanna. They didn't put and the gays then. They didn't put the gays. No, so he <laughs> can <laughs> say that, but we can't say that. I could. Could you? I would have done. Right, um, said, oh, well, we'd love to know a little bit more about your circumstances. Obviously, digging thing, all oh, these yeah. two guys, what's going oh, on yeah. here? So they explained that they wanted to come and see the house. Their family lives nearby. They'd really, really love to see it. It looks like a lovely, lovely property. And the owners replied saying, dear Lachlan and Luke, Thank you for sharing your circumstances with us. Mm. We're sorry if we seem intrusive, but we just want to make clear that we would be unwilling for two men in a partnership to view or buy our house. As it is contrary to the gracious teaching in God's word, the Holy Bible, e.g. Romans 1, 24 to 28, <laughs> and Jude 7, King James Version. Very specific. With regards. <laughs> now, the reason they're my plank is not because I actually would... Uh, object to them saying we don't want people coming into our house. You have the right if you're a homeowner to say to a homo, you can't come into our house. So you can you know, do that as well. <laughs> you can do all this. I can do all of this. There's nothing you wrong. do have the right to say that. It's not of nice. Of course you do. But I'm going to call them planks because they're morons. The gays have got so much money to spend. It's a big, if I wanted to get back to that? the gays. The pink pound. Exactly. Yeah. I'd be like, right, well, the best way to show my homophobia, I'm going to charge them every penny of that £650,000. I'm not going to give them one pound off and I'm going to laugh all the way to Sunday school with all that money in the bank. But instead, I... they refuse them even viewing it. What idiots. I know. It is mad, yeah, it's mad isn't, isn't it? it? I mean, I just... Because yeah, those two lads were really upset as well. They were really. Is that the end of the story? Or are they well, they've gone on Good it? Morning Britain since. They've said that they're not going to... The, 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 the couple who were discriminated yes. against. Yeah. They've said they're not going to pursue it. They were very upset about yeah. it. 
yeah. purple bricks who had the property yeah. have now said to uh, the God-fearing the couple two, yeah. that they're taking the property, they've refunded their money and said, we're not going to sell the property, you don't share our values, but I just find it a bit bizarre that they it wouldn't is. just take the money and it run. It is bizarre. Take the money because off the gays. Di- what difference does it make? You're selling something. Well, if you're something. selling something, you're moving out. Who yeah. cares? Well, who, exactly. And also, if you really object to meeting people like that, for example, couldn't you say to the estate agent, well, I'll tell yeah. you what, we'll go out, uh, you can bring them and show them the yeah, house. Yeah, you do the viewings. Or show you them know. around and say, sorry, the price has gone up by 20 grand. I mean, it wouldn't be a nice thing to do. No. But... You know, at least you get you to see, still sell the house. Uh, capitalist part, capitalist yeah. yeah, that's they what just, Thatcher would do. That's exactly Thatcher right. would double the price. Exactly yeah, it's right. perfectly within your right, no matter what you're selling, to decide who you sell it to. You yeah. can't argue with well, that. But this just is a bit like there, there is. I don't know where the law stands on this because they are obviously selling a product, and I don't know whether you can say when you're selling a product. You, I'm not selling it to you because of your sexuality. Yes, you can. Yeah, you can. can you? Legally, you know, legally, if it's your product and you are selling your product, whether it's a house, a bike, or a plank of wood. You can choose who you sell it to. You don't have to. Well, but if you have a shop, right, which ostensibly is open to everybody to a, come a, in, a, a commercial, that's a commercial it? property yeah. is different. If you ask, if you discriminate someone right. coming into your shop and you yeah. don't sell them something because they are black or they are gay, the shop within no, this. no, 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 no. Well, well, not really, because it's house. private property, isn't it? Yeah, I was listening to the lawyer explain this the oh. other day, and it's like if so if, they if, can. if you, you if it, there are laws, obviously discrimination laws, and you can stop. You know, discriminating if it's someone selling you something in a shop and they're discriminating against you on your sexuality or your religion or your skin colour or whatever. But if someone is selling you something personally, yeah. then because the case nothing. of the the the, the baker, the gay I think cake. in Northern the gay Ireland, cake. the gay yeah. cake. Mm. I think I listened to the same lawyer mm. who said that it wasn't about the fact that they didn't want to make a cake for a gay couple. They didn't want to write on it what the, the gay couple yeah. wanted. Yeah, that's right. And yeah, so therefore that's it. It's, it's the same argument, isn't scenario. it? Yeah. Well, well yeah. like I said, take the money off the gays. But I think like gays is an absolutely good description of them. Uh, I'm going to finally go with the big American company as my final plank uh, of the week, and it's Nike. You know, uh, mm. the very famous shoe manufacturers represented by all sorts of very uh, well-heeled sportsmen and women. Oh. Get it? Um, anyway, there's a guy called Dex Briggs. Only in America could you be called Dex. Dex. I mean, I don't know what that's short for. Declan? Dex, Dexter in Dexter. Dynasty. Do you remember him? Oh, yeah, yeah. Dexter, yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Anyway, so he's 53 years old. He's been working for Nike for around about 25, 26 years. Um, they've got a policy about vaccinations, right? Now, he hasn't been fired because he's not vaccinated. Because he is fully vaccinated. He actually is fully vaccinated. Yep. The reason he's been fired is because he refused to upload his COVID vaccination information to a third-party company that they wanted him to store it with because he said he was worried that he'd had his identity stolen in the past, he wasn't comfortable, he didn't mind showing them the fact that he'd had his card mm. stamped and he had his two vaccinations or however many they asked him for. Um, but he said, I don't want my personal information going to this outside company, which well, seems, seems to me reasonable. to be perfectly reasonable. It seems very um, reasonable. But they basically said, um, we are a private company, it's our right to set our own vaccine mandate. Uh, they got 14,000 workers in this place called Beaverton, Oregon, <laughs> right? I mean, it's not funny. Stop it at the back there. It's but it's like Beaver Town. I Beaver mean, come Ton. On. Ton. Um, so yeah, it, it poor, poor guy. That, I mean, the world it? has gone very mad, hasn't it? I mean, we've, we're currently fighting off the kind of NHS vaccination mandate because yes. that shouldn't be happening. Care workers in this country have been fired. Over in America now, it's not good enough to even just have the vaccination. You have to be able it's to give, very... share it with everybody else. And now I've heard that they outrageous, have it? a new pair of trainers out there, Nike Air Vaxes. Very good. Oh. Is Novak Djokovic going to be selling them? <laughs> oh, Probably God. not. I mean, you know, we've managed to get Australia in twice this uh, <laughs> This, this month is where old jokes go to die, yeah, slowly they do. and painfully. They do. Oh. But I mean, it is absolutely ridiculous. He says, I have my vaccination card. I'm quite willing to show you that, but I'm not willing to give my personal information to this outside company and any other company they want to share it with without even telling me who they are. Which I think is well, fair enough. Where do you stop it? with that? I mean, yeah. where do you stop? I mean, so every single piece of medical information about you, in theory, then you have to hand over when anyone asks well, I never you. See, America is very interesting to me because I'm going there soon, and I'm well, quite you've been shocked. Going to America for as long as I can remember. Well, I have been. I've been going to America for going? as long as I can remember. <laughs> well, I'm going next month. But hopefully, you stopped him. Oh, good. You're going to go see your mum. I am. Oh, um, but the point is this, they have become crazed about the vaccination in certain states, and, and they're talking about New York State here, they've already got something called an Excelsior Pass, which you carry around with you to prove that you've been vaccinated, so that wherever you go, you have a QR code to show that you've been vaccinated. Do you know that there And are... they've been arresting nine-year-olds in Manhattan. Nine-year-olds? For going to museums because they're not double about vaccinated. About their Excelsior Pass. 
Because, yeah, you have to have an Excelsior. You know the Excelsior is the name of these huge, great, big, massive gay parties with bare chests. I didn't know that in briefs. No. no. So I would have Funny named enough, it something else. Why would Mike and I not well, know that I mean, you That's too. a bit niche, to be fair. No, but I, why, would you, why would you name it Excelsior? Well, I don't think the New York well, State government would know that about well, I think your... they happen in New York, some of these parties. Well, so... I'm just saying, it would, be, it would confuse me. Excelsior is used. If that would confuse me. What is the thought process between talking I about mean, a nine-year-old and a vaccine what? and you having... If I was give, offered an Excelsior pass, I would think I was getting something very different. That's all I'm saying. It's right. not a nine-year-old. Well, that says more well, about you. Never mind a nine-year-old. <laughs> yeah. It says more about you than it does. I think Excelsior is a word that they use in all sorts of different ways. Well, I think we've reclaimed it. Uh, well, well, you say so, <laughs> but anyway, now I'm sorry I've, I've mentioned it at all. Uh, anyway, the, Oreg the Oregon state government are trying to come up with another pass which might not have that name. Yeah. You know, is there any other names they should avoid? Don't call it heaven. The Beaver Town <laughs> Pass. The Beaver, the beaver Pass. Beaver. <laughs> no? We don't want that one. No. You can have that. Not the no. Beaver Pass? Gays no. Don't you want people that. are unbelievable. Um, <laughs> is that, so I think we're done, aren't we? Have we not done all, all of our... Finish on a nice bit of beaver. Finish yeah. on a nice bit of non-controversial, non-refundable, non-fungible even... Um, innuendo. Right, so uh, we've got to choose now who is going to be the winner of Plague of the Week. Right, so would you like to tell me your three nominees, please? OK, my three nominees again are Adele. Yes. Uh, Grant Shapps and Chris Boardman, obviously, oh, yes. cycling the whole of that highway code stuff. And then um, the mad religious people, uh, Dr. Joanna Brunker and Luke Main, who turned down the gays from viewing yes. the house. Yes, I think it's got to be Adele. It's got to be Adele. I think Adele, Inside I must admit, three. yeah. All she right, spurs, so mine, isn't she? Jacinda Ardern, Ooh. Nike, no more about that, <laughs> and Weber, barbecues. <laughs> um, I think for me it's Jacinda. I think she's lost the plot. But who's choosing, me or him? You are. Shut it. Oh, yeah, sorry. So it's not your Shut choice. It, you get to choose boy. hers. Oh, I thought I got to choose everyone. No, no. I don't know how it works. You've done it before, plenty of times. I don't know. What Never have you got it. in that hip flask? <laughs> um, any case, right, I'm going to, not because I'm agreeing with him, obviously I don't, I'm going to go with Jacinda Ardern oh, as she's well. She's agreeing with me. Okay, yeah. so you're agreeing with him. So, uh, you give him your three. I wouldn't three. have done because I would have said it first. I should have said it first. Copy well, me. I didn't. Right. Uh, Come on then, your three are. Me. Who gave you a Dallas nomination? Oh, oh, oh. Right, sorry, my three are. Don't show any light on the magic, please. Gotcha. What happens when my, my three are Boris Johnson, mm. um, Christian Wakeford, and Weasel Wakeford, and civil servants. Oh, do I choose now? You choose. Uh, this one. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Who I would choose? Who would you choose? Boris Johnson. I would choose Boris Johnson as go. well. I'm Thank sorry, that, that man is. is I would choose Boris Johnson. Okay, so now we have Boris Johnson, Jacinda Ardern, and Adele. That's a good. Oh, that's three a good good three. It's a very bad group, isn't it? Uh, do I get to choose now? Well, no, no. we decide by a process of dem democratic conversation as to what you think should be the right. winner. Right, OK, well, I, I, I know I would say this, wouldn't I? But I'm going to go for Boris Johnson because Boris Johnson, what he does and says and doesn't do affects my life mm. personally. Adele from Tottenham, no. And Jacinda Ardern, although I think But I, I would argue about Boris that actually he's escaped... So therefore, he's not as plankerish as he was oh, last week well, because because he's now so maybe he's got the police. Smart. Well, yeah, because he's got the police. He doesn't in. know what a birthday party is. Yeah, Come but on. He, he knows how to divert an investigation. Well, he must. Right? He's got he seven children. He, knows, he must know what a birthday party. He knows is. what an investigation <laughs> is as well because he's now just kiboshed one by bringing mm. in the Does that make him a plank or does that make him quite well, clever? I think it was makes that him quite clever. Manoeuvring or was that just? Well, I can't believe it just happened that Cressida Dick just suddenly woke up this morning and went, I know, I'll investigate it, and then they won't be able to publish oh, but, the results but the, of the other one. there was new information that came to light, wasn't there, with the actual birthday party? The birthday party. party. Yeah. I mean, the are they really, really going to say to him, you are Nick's son. Uh, sorry, what's the offence? Uh, you were... Uh, having a birthday party. You are charged party. with having a, a bit of cake in a room with 30 people yeah. uh, where there was apparently well, some singing. I'm going to fight for Adele here. I'm sorry, she did it the day before. All no, of these I, look, people look, look, went I, to I think the Adele's concert. good. I like I, I, Adele. Well, considering it was one of my... Yeah, no, She's going to hate that really because, good because, because she thinks this is about her winning, right? Yes. So she thinks always thinks... That as long as she's got the nomination that wins it, that yeah. she somehow Which won. Which sort of hand. Which sort of hand. But what, but what well, you, we both came. So so basically, like what happened was that we both came up with Adele, and we had to choose which one of I mean, us let's put face Adele it. forward. And because Everybody I'm came up with Adele. It's not like you each had an exclusive. No, 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 no excuse I me. Know. I invented excuse Adele. You heard excuse the story me. about Adele. Your hands are freezing. I know. Excuse me. My God. Excuse me. 
Hello. There Yours were two, are warm. There were two of us in this room that came up with Adele, and you came up with a barbecue. No, Adele was on my list. What would you like she? to see it? What, your list? Yes. <laughs> Quite a long list. <laughs> it's very small list. Isn't it? I had to reduce it before so, I brought it to the public. Bringing it back to the job in I hand. I think Adele's here. the winner. I think Adele. She betrayed her fans. She betrayed the yeah. UK. She betrayed fat people. She betrayed <laughs> what, by being thin, by losing the weight. She betrayed that's Tottenham. Yeah. She's betrayed. Well, that's us fine all. then. I like right, her. She then. betrayed Tottenham. See now that is a man that has an argument. Yeah. Right. That's why we like him. Thank you. There we are. That's See, nice we end with a compliment to you. Um, when I say we, obviously, it makes me feel nervous. So <laughs> Boris, yeah, I always feel nervous. Well, listen, <laughs> wouldn't be the first. Um, so it's a moral victory. Jacinda Ardern, I think, comes in second. Yeah. I'm going to go Boris Johnson third. Oh no, that's just victimisation. No, it's not. That's it's misogyny. not personal. That's For heaven's misogyny. sake, it's a hate crime. Just because I'm a girl, it's a hate, oh. crime. It's a hate crime. Right. So winner of Plank of the Week this week. Thanks very much indeed to Dawn Neeson and to Christo. Is Adele.